I'm gonna let you in on a little secret that the Smash Ultimate community simply forgot about. Half of the top tiers in this game weren't top tiers. It's not that people got better, it's because the characters got buffed. That's right, today I'm going over the five characters that you forgot were buffed, probably, especially if you didn't really play before the pandemic, because these characters got buffed either right before the pandemic or during the pandemic, and it the game has not been the same since. First, I'll give an honorable mention to Pit. The reason for the honorable mention is because Pit's not a top tier, even by basically the most the biggest Pit believers, so he's high tier, so he's honorable mention, but I do want to mention the insane amount of buffs. It's not just that Zachary is god, although Zachary is my god, uh, but it's not just because he's super good that the character's suddenly relevant, it's because the character got buffed. Starting off with the 4.0 patch, we have his jab have less lag. 5 to 4 is a big deal for like parry punishes. Up tilt has less end lag, which means that up tilt into up air and stuff is easier combos. Back air goes from 11 frames to 8 frames of landing lag, which means that that back air went from minus 7 at best to minus 4 at best. Huge difference. Down smash was stronger and down air is stronger. But then of course the big patch in the 8.0 patch, which happened of the online era, is that down tilt sends at a better angle. So down tilt combos now because you used to just be able to DI it away and then at like 50% it would stop working entirely. Uh, and also it has less knockback scaling so it sends less far. So down tilt up air being a combo, down tilt back air being a combo weren't a thing before. Up smash got a lot stronger, which means that obviously it's a more potent kill move. Uh, down smash sends at a lower angle which made it harder to DI which means that it's a stronger kill move. Up air got crazy buffed which is literally it has less startup, it has less end lag, it auto cancels earlier, it's stronger and it sends more vertical on the final hit which means again it's harder to DI. So you know how like Rob up air you can DI and live a lot longer if you, you know, get the correct DI. Pits up air, as far as I'm aware, doesn't cross up. I could be wrong about that. I probably honestly am wrong about that. Uh, but you would be able to DI it and live for a very long time, as opposed to now where it basically sends straight up. It, you're not DIing that move. And one of the most underappreciated buffs is the fact that his down B has five frames less of end lag, which to me is just insane because that move is such a good disadvantage tool. And also you don't have to hold it as long, which means that you can just kind of flash it if you're not sure. And then you're going to be fine, kind of like an Olimar with. So yeah, Pit got significantly buffed over the course of the game because those buffs matter a lot. Uh, but he's not a top tier, so I didn't want to put him in the official five character list. So let's get into it. But before we do, I want to ask, of course, that you subscribe and like the video. It does help in the algorithm. I would appreciate it a lot. But let's get into the five characters that y'all forgot were buffed. Uh, this isn't like any particular order. So these are just five characters. Sonic is a character that got huge buffs over the course of the game. It's funny because it's not actually that many buffs, but the buffs that he got are so influential that he has to make this list. Of course, part of this is just Sonic players getting better and understanding their tools, but one of the biggest tools that Sonic has literally got buffed being his up air. In the 9.0 patch, Sonic's up air got an additional hitbox below Sonic, allowing it to connect more reliably from the first hit. And I pulled it up here. This hitbox, the lowest one, didn't exist, which means that you could almost always SDI down on his hitboxes and you would get out of up air. So the crazy combos that you see Sonics get and like all the Sonic players get with like up air, like rising up air, up air, back air up like that stuff didn't exist before so his damage output in non so uh, non spin combos was drastically nerfed compared to what it is now especially considering how low this first hitbox hits that extra one existing is literally huge it it, it is so such an impactful buff that I don't know if he deserved. His dash attack and up tilt got buffed as well, although Sonic players don't really use those moves too much, so not gonna be that big of a deal. Uh, but the other big buff that he got is his up smash. His up smash went from frame 18 to 14, which is gonna be huge, and it has more invincibility, which means it's just a better anti-air, it's a better platform poke. It's really obnoxious to deal with. It also works more consistently, which is of course gonna be a big deal. So a move that was already strong just basically became more reliable uh, and faster. And of course, faster up smashes are always going to be huge because you can kind of hit people doing rising air aerials on your shield with them a lot more consistently. And even though that wasn't like the big patch, he did get buffed at some point in the 2.0 uh, patch, giving his back air less landing lag frames, which of course is huge because Sonic's back air is incredibly powerful and good, but having more end lag would have made it less good and less good for combos and it would have been less safe on shield. And of course, his forward tilt did get buffed a while back as well. It's still not the most consistent move, but it used to be even less consistent. And of course, that move is a two-frame move. It's a kill move. So it ends up being very, very influential. So even though Sonic didn't get a ton of buffs, that up air buff to me is like ridiculously huge because he used to not be a threat, uh, especially like he wouldn't be able to do spin into up air, which he can now because you would simply fall out of the move. So all of his advantage got significantly scarier after that 9.0 patch. But let's get into the next character. 
Diddy Kong's Infinite may have been called the Pyramid Scheme, but it is a crazy conspiracy theory to say that Diddy Kong was always a good character because he got buffed to hell. Basically, every important move that you think of with Diddy Kong got buffed except for Banana Pole. Like, Diddy Kong was straight up not a good character at the beginning of this game. Uh, his Nair used to auto-cancel frame 50. It wasn't an auto-cancelable move basically at all, which is insane. His dash attack got less startup. His forward tilt has new hitboxes. His down smash did more damage and was stronger. His Nair got significantly bigger, which obviously made his combo game bigger. The up air does more damage. In 3.1, his up smash got better, both in connectability and, of course, in final knockback, which, of course, up smash is one of his best kill moves, right? Up air got four frames less of landing lag. Down air had less startup from frame 17 to 15, which basically makes those nair slash up air to down air combos way more true. His up B made him fall less fast when he starts charging it, which is obviously huge because it makes his recovery significantly better. And the up B hit at the very beginning got so much stronger, like it does nine more percent, which is insane. Of course, they did nerf uh, the banana, right? His uh, The time frame between being able to spawn banana when it disappeared went from 12 frames to 61 frames, and then it buffed, you know, they nerfed it again uh, to make sure that there were no infinites. But those things got removed with a plethora of buffs. We have forward tilt that sends at a worse angle, which means that it's a better tech chase move and a better edge guarding move, which of course is like the main use for it nowadays. The hitboxes are larger because that move didn't used to be able to two frame. It also is out for longer, which makes it easier to two frame. His dash attack sets up significantly better. One of the hitboxes is larger to actually make it reliably used. So like you used to be able to fall out of that move pretty consistently, kind of like Sonic up air, but now it's just an amazing burst option that combos you. His down smash got less startup as well as reduced duration overall, and his forward air got got bigger. And of course, forward air is still one of his best moves in neutral, so there's not so many buffs. That's literally his two-frame move, his kill move with up smash, his combo starter with dash attack. Like, basically, the only thing that didn't get buffed was down tilt, right? And I guess back air, back air was always kind of ridiculous, but nair getting bigger is huge, forward air getting bigger is huge. Like, these moves were not that good before. You used to be able to beat it out clean as characters that didn't even have a lot of range. So Diddy Kong being able to, you know, fly around the stage like he does is basically almost entirely because of the buffs, other than and again, like monkey flip, down tilt, and back air. Cloud might be one of the characters the least talked about in terms of buffs, and they just think, oh man, Spargo just does it different. No, this character got better, and we're going to go over it right now. Of course, at the very beginning, his like forward air overall end lag got less and finishing touch got better, but finishing touch is a niche move. I'm not really going to touch on it that much. But in the 7.0 patch, he got a ton of buffs, very, very influential buffs, one of them in particular. His dash attack got significantly stronger, which means that those dash attacks that Spargo hits when you're on the ledge or, you know, you're trying to get off the ledge, they used to not kill that much. It used to kill with good DI at like 160, 170, and, you know, with bad DI at 120. Now with bad DI, you're dying at 90 or 80 if you he has rage and consistently dying at like 120. Huge difference. F smash works more consistently, but again, that's a pretty niche move, so it's not that big of a deal. But one of the biggest ones is up smash. Up smash went from frame 15 to 12, uh, you know, with a total duration that is less as well. And then there is more knockback scaling on up smash. Up smash used to not really be that strong of a kill move, and now it's one of the best kill moves in current meta. His limit gauge charges faster while using down B, which is honestly insane because the amount of times you just have a down B just active as your opponent is recovering as Cloud is huge, so you're going to get limit significantly more often, but in my opinion, the most influential buff of all of these is the fact that Climb Hazard snaps the ledge four frames faster. It didn't change the range, it's not like he there's any type of nerf according to this, but basically it's just significantly harder to edge guard him because of this, and that changed everything. Four frames may not seem like that much, but he grabs the ledge significantly faster than he used to. That means that two framing him would have been easier. It means that hitting him just out of his up B in general was significantly easier. And that's why Spargo's recoveries are so good. Well, one of the reasons. Spargo's recoveries are also just good because Spargo is good at, at, at recovering. But it is a huge difference that Cloud is able to grab the ledge that much faster because it made his edge guarding like capabilities significantly harder for his opponents. And it was just like, I remember the first time playing Cloud after this buff, it was someone It was someone in the CFL locals, I don't remember which Cloud it was, and I tried to edge guard him, my normal flow chart that I developed from Smash 4, and I missed every single time. So of course, people, I mean, people barely miss edge guards by one, two frames all the time, so a four frame difference literally is hundreds of examples that you can probably look at that if that buff didn't exist, that Cloud's getting edge guarded, and Cloud, of course, that's like his biggest weakness, so now he doesn't have those weaknesses. It's insane to me, that buff is so slept on. 
And honestly, next I'm going to go to a character that I feel like a lot of people do remember was buffed, but I don't think they remember exactly how buffed this character was, because this character wasn't a character before, and that's Sheik. Of course, with combo characters, you always think, oh man, like, this character got good because people learned how the combos worked and learned how all of these different things work. No, this character got better, and people got better because this character got significantly buffed over the course of the game, and people got better. So let's talk about the buffs that Sheik got. The 2.0 is pretty, that doesn't really matter that much, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's start at the 3.0 patch. Sheik's Rapid Jab finisher has less ending lag. This is why sometimes it's a little difficult to tell when Sheik is going to like cross up. And if you do notice, it's still pretty safe. Uh, this is actually a rather influential buff, so I'm just going to point that out. Down Tilt Sour Spot has reduced range, making the tip or hitbox easier to land because there was less overlap on those hitboxes. So basically, Sheik's Down Tilt got significantly better as a combo move and sometimes a kill move, or sorry, kill setup move because Down Tilt up smashes a combo. Bear got bigger. Forward air, any buffs from forward air are always huge. Needle Storm charges one point two times faster. I don't think y'all remember how slow this needles used to charge. It used to be like Smash 4 it was like one, two, three, four, five, and now it's like one, two, three, four, five, done. Like it's crazy. Sheik's shield got bigger in the 7.0 patch. Down smash has less startup. And Down Smash also just works better, even though it still kind of falls out sometimes, but you know, it's better overall. Standing Grab got more range. Needle Storm has less landing lag, making its combo potential better. So landing needles used to have four more frames of end lag. That means that those needles to up smash combos that worked, it means that the needle to footstool combos that work used to literally not work or would have to be significantly closer for them to work. So huge difference. Burst Grenade got less lag, but Burst Grenade's whatever. Up B got a lot stronger, so failing an edge guard against Sheik used to be not that big of a deal. You get hit, but it wouldn't kill you. Now it kills you with like 100. It is crazy strong. In the later patches, Forward Smash got buffed twice, just making it stronger, which means that those things that are like dragged down into Forward Smash used to not be that good of a kill potential, or it would just miss sometimes. And Up Tilt got buffed, making it a move, because you used to be able to just mash things out of Up Tilt, because it didn't have enough hits done sometimes. And of course, if you've been watching Void recently, you know his crazy Up Tilt combos, and just Up Tilt is a crazy move in general, but it didn't used to be. Basically, every other move in Sheik's combo arsenal got buffed, especially Needles. Needles is like the biggest one, obviously, because Needles are just insane in advantage for neutral, and that's a huge difference. Like, you wouldn't be able to see WebJP play as defensively as he does, because he wasn't able to, because he wouldn't have had, he wouldn't have the Needles. And for the final character that, yeah, this character didn't just come out of nowhere. Shattuck may be really good and so is Neo, but uh, this character got buffed, we're talking Corrin. Bro, look at all that green. So let's start from the beginning. Corrin was very bad at the beginning, but you have Nair with an earlier auto cancel. Up air now auto cancels better, so not too influential, but as they stack, the stuff gets crazy. Forward Smash got better because the, you know, charging hitbox now links better into the kill move, which means that those ledge situations that the Corrins get didn't used to work, used to be able to just get out of it, now you get hit and you die. Up Smash got better, but that's a pretty niche move. Downer works better now because it used to not be, so you'd be able to fall out of like a falling downer and then punish with a falling aerial onto Corrin. Pin has less end lag overall in the air, which is in my opinion huge, because now they get like pin into falling Nair and forward air, which didn't really used to work. Up B got more invincibility, literally three more frames, and of course it hits more reliably, even though it still doesn't really, uh, but better is always gonna be better, right? And it got stronger, so it's going to kill if you're wrong or if they get like that air dodge read or whatever. So like that clip that Neo got on tweak, maybe just wouldn't have killed. But again, Corn still wasn't considered that great because a lot of the moves still weren't that great. But let's continue. Forward Smash has more base knockback, so again, it's just going to be stronger when you uh, get hit by those random setups. Pin Jump has less end lag from 46 to 40, and Up B goes farther. Corrin's recovery literally got better. It's not that people got worse at edge guarding it; it's that the recovery literally goes farther and is better because that recovery used to be bad, like bad, bad, like all the times that you see Shattuck and Neo recovering from like crazy distances. Literally Literally just wouldn't make it back. It was so bad. While the 7.0 patch was pretty irrelevant, the 8.0 patch went absolutely crazy. Forward Smash got a shield stun mu multiplier of 1.6, so those forward smashes that again you see that people get like those cheeky setups with the charging really didn't used to work and also the final hit literally used to be super punishable, now it's not. The tipper is also stronger, so it used to just not kill even with those setups. And, uh, you know, there's a new hitbox basically allowing the hitboxes to work better. Forward air does more damage with knockback stealing compensated, but that's still going to increase hit stun because damage and hit stun are correlated. So forward air became a move that does more damage straight up. That is also a better combo move. Back air does so much more knockback because of that 1% buff. You'd be so surprised at how much 1% can change things in the knockback equation. It is insane. 
So back air got stronger. Up air got stronger. Uh, so it's literally better kill potential and it does more damage. So again, those core and combos that you're getting hit by up air, up air, forward air, up air, do like five more percent. And 5% can really matter over the course of the game. And of course, one of the most important things is that side B just got buffed overall. The uh, you know pin kick has less lag by four frames. The kicks have better knockback, which again, why that's it was already strong. And jumping out of the pin has significantly less end lag. It got it got buffed at some point from 46 to 40, then it went from 40 to 30. So all of the mix-ups that you see these Corrin players do, where they pin and then jump and then it's harder to punish it. Uh, it used to be 10 frames, sorry, 16 frames more punishable, but before this patch, it was. 10 frames more punishable, which means that most people are just reacting and doing jump up air. Should it be reactable anyway if it's on shield? Yeah, but everyone's bad, so it's fine, including me. It happens. Because again, if you're wrong and you get down aired, you're going to get put into a tech chase or you're going to get nared and then you're above core. And so like sometimes it's simply not worth it to try to punish these things. And yeah, that is going to be five characters plus Pit who you forgot were buffed for sure. No one remembers those characters were buffed. So let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this type of video. As always, social media stride and partner stuff is down below. See you all next time. Peace.